Today we're going over the circuit sequence of steam boilers with control modules and spark ignition. On the left you have a schematic that shows the big picture. This is all the wiring throughout the system and on the right it is a close-up of the areas we're going to be focusing on each step of the way with uh, some visual aids added in. So everything begins with 120 volts coming into our transformer. So we have a black carrying 120 volts in, we have a white wire that is our neutral, and our transformer is a step down from 120 volts to 24 volts. Now this R terminal is the source of all the 24 volt power we have throughout our entire low voltage system. Now this R terminal is going to feed two different circuits. It's going to feed a safety circuit which has a low water cutoff, spill switches, limit controls, flame rollouts, and then it is also going to feed our burner circuit. This is going to be our control module, our gas valve, our pilot light, and so forth. The big picture here, the way this thing is wired up intentionally is that the safety circuit has to be completed before the burner circuit can be completed. Now this is all done through the vent damper. The vent damper is the only device which both circuits run through. So you can see we have four wires going into our vent damper, one wire coming in and coming out on our safety circuit, one wire going in and coming out on a burner circuit. Now you will see steam boilers out there once in a while that don't actually have a vent damper in the flue pipe in that case it's just one big circuit rather than two so it's still going to go through all the safeties first and then it's going to go on right into the burner circuit but a vent damper is very good in learning how to diagnose a system because if the vent damper opens but the boiler is not firing up then you have a pretty good clue there that your problem is on the burner side if the vent damper doesn't open at all, you know the problem is most likely on your safety side. So let's go back to the R terminal on our transformer. Our burner circuit is going to begin going from the R terminal up to the vent damper. Now it's not going to go anywhere from here because as we said, the safety circuit has to be completed first. So this is kind of a holding point for the burner circuit. Going back to the R terminal again, we begin our safety circuit and the first place it goes is to our low water cutoff. Now this 24 volts is also the voltage we need to open our vent damper. And by opening the vent damper, we actually close that switch on the burner circuit. So from this point on, every device that we go through until we get to the vent damper is capable of shutting the whole boiler down. So our low water cutoff, whether it's uh, an electronic type or a float type, um, it is basically a switch. And you can see there's a little relay um, in there that is a electronic type. If the water is low, it will open up that relay and prevent the circuit from being activated. If the water is at a satisfactory condition in the boiler, it will allow this 24 volts to carry on to the rest of the circuit. So from our low water cutoff, we can see that it goes back to the G terminal on a transformer. And from here, we go directly up to the R terminal on our thermostat. So this is our control module for the boiler. It turns it on and off on a call for heat. But this can be very problematic for a lot of people who try to wire in smart thermostats on these kinds of steam boilers because they don't realize there is a low water cutoff there. And in a low water condition, we're killing power to that thermostat. And this is what causes all kinds of power issues with smart thermostats because of this uh, internal wiring in the boiler. Let's carry on from the thermostat. We have a call for heat and that will send our signal from the W terminal on our thermostat down to this Y terminal on the transformer. Now from here, the next item in our circuit is going to be our spill switch. Now you might see additional limits there on a schematic and on a lot of boilers, the low water cutoff might actually be wired in there instead of in between the R and G terminals on our transformer like we've gone over so far. So it's always good to check the schematics and see where your items are actually located so that you can go through step by step and diagnose problems. But our spill switch is a thermal limit that usually sits right on the flue pipe. Um, sometimes it might be on the back of the boiler on a box, but either way, this switch will open when the flue pipe overheats. Now, this is usually a sign that there's some kind of obstruction. It's not drafting properly, and so this can shut the boiler down. The next item in our circuit is our limit control. It's also known as a pressure troll. Um, this is a pressure device that regulates the cut 
uh, in and cut out pressure of the boiler itself. So as the boiler fires up, it builds up steam. It reaches a maximum, let's say one and a half to maximum three pounds of steam pressure. Um, it will open that limit shut down the boiler the boiler steam pressure will come back down to a cut-in pressure say anywhere from a quarter of a pound to maybe a half a pound or maybe even up to one pound but it's going to range in between those two cut-in and cut-out pressures to regulate the boiler and this is going to be a pretty active limit during heating cycles just to keep the boiler in a good pressure zone and it will continue cutting in and out until the set point is satisfied on the thermostat our next Next item would be the flame rollouts. Now this is another thermal limit. It is located down by the actual burners themselves. Um, and this is just another safety if the flame starts to roll out from underneath the boiler, it will sense that extra heat and open the circuit and shut the boiler down. And finally, we make it to our vent damper. Now this 24 volts going into the vent damper is going to operate a vent damper motor and that is going to start opening the vent damper itself. And this circuit will be completed as it travels back to the common terminal on our transformer bus. Now once this vent damper fully opens, it will activate a switch that will now connect the 24 volts coming from our R terminal for our burner circuit to the wire going to our controller. So our vent damper is kind of like acting like your relay. It's using one circuit to activate a switch that closes another circuit. So now this brings us to our burner control module and I want to pause right here and start talking a little bit about diagnostics because that 24 volt terminal on the control module is a great place to start if you're having issues with a system. If you have 24 volts here, you know everything we've covered up to this point in the video is working properly. If it doesn't have 24 volts there, um, you can use schematics like this to start systematically going through the system and trying to find out where the problem is specifically. So for example, we can just start at the beginning. We can check and see if we have 24 volts on that R terminal on our transformer bus. If we don't have it there maybe the transformer is burnt out maybe we don't have voltage coming into the transformer maybe the breaker is tripped something like that if we do have 24 volts there we can now jump right over to our G terminal on the transformer do we have 24 volts there if not um, something's going on with our low water cutoff maybe we have a low water condition in the boiler maybe the probe is fouled up and not reading properly if it's a float type maybe the float is stuck it needs to be cleaned out if we do have 24 volts on that G terminal we can hop over to that Y terminal do we have 24 volts there if not there's something going on with our thermostat maybe it's not calling for heat maybe the thermostat itself is bad we can then move on to the spill switch if we got 24 coming in but 24 is not coming out well then maybe our flu is not drafting properly. Maybe it's overheating. Maybe there's something obstructing the chimney, something along those lines. If we go to our pressure control, and we have 24 coming in but not coming out, we know we might have an issue there. Uh, maybe somebody was messing around with these settings on the control. We move on to our flame rollouts. Um, the, a lot of these flame rollouts are manually reset, so if you have 24 coming in but nothing coming out, you know you might have an issue with flame rollout there and you have to investigate that, figure what the problem is. If you have 24 volts coming out of that flame rollout going up to your vent damper, but you're not getting it at that 24 volt terminal on the burner control module, well then you know you have an issue with your vent damper maybe it's not opening all the way that's the great thing about schematics like this is that it's literally an instruction manual on how to go about diagnosing systematically um, so that you can narrow in on where the actual problem is now assuming we have our 24 volts at our burner control module the next thing that's going to happen is we have these terminals up here labeled MV, MV, PV, and PV. What this stands for, PV is your pilot valve. That is the little solenoid in your gas valve that allows gas to make it to your pilot light. Um, MV is your main valve. That is the main solenoid in your gas valve that allows gas to flow to your burners to actually fire up. The MVPV is just like a common for both of those circuits. So the first thing that's going to happen on a 24 volt signal to the burner control module, it is going to activate 24 volts on the PV circuit to open up our solenoid for our pilot light. So going back to diagnostics, if you have 24 volts coming in on that terminal, but you don't have it going out on PV, you know you have a problem with your control module. 
Now once our pilot valve opens, it is going to initiate a voltage on that spark terminal on our control module. And this is going to create an arc that lights our pilot gas. So if we have 24 volts making it all the way to our gas valve and we we're not getting ignition on our pilot, well then maybe we have an issue with that spark plug. Maybe it's fouled up and it's not arcing over to light up the gas. Once our pilot light lights, it's going to heat up our thermocouple and that is going to send a 25 or 30 millivolt signal to the sensing terminal on the burner control module. From there, our control module is going to send a 24 volt signal out on our main valve for our gas valve to fire up the boiler. And all those circuits are going to go back on common to MVPV, back to ground on the control module, and eventually back to common on our transformer bus. So I have, uh, I have been out on diagnostic calls where everything would be working fine right up to that point where the 24 volts should be sent out on the main valve to open up the gas, and it just wasn't there. So it was just a bad control module. If you have 24 volts to that gas valve main solenoid and the gas valve is an opening, well then you know you have an issue with your gas valve. But that is the beauty of schematics and knowing sequences is that once you understand this, diagnostics becomes a whole lot easier. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.